Kevin, welcome back to Diabetes Connections. I wish I were in New Orleans. It's so exciting to have the ADA scientific sessions back in person. How's it going? You know what? It'll be a great, a great few days for us. Uh, there's all sorts of presentations and posters uh, showing the benefits, continued benefits of real-time CGM, Stacy. Uh, what we've thought forever is truly coming to fruition as we look at the outcomes generated uh, by this technology and and truly the you know the things we continue to learn as as it advances. So it'll be a good it'll be a good several days for us. We're looking forward to the show. Excellent. What do you think the headline will be? I mean, I know there's press releases and there's posters. What do you think the headline's going to be out of this conference for Dexcom? I well, I think the first headline's going to be we all got together again. <laughs> And I think that's going to make everybody very happy. I think the headline for Dexcom is continued growth and progress. And as you look at uh, our partners with the integrated systems, uh, the data that will be presented uh, by them, and just the outcomes they're generating, the excitement for Omnipod 5, for example, uh, in, in the world, and continued growth with Tandem uh, and, and what they're doing, that'll be very good. You know, our old mantra, CGM first, really doesn't even have to be a mantra anymore. Uh, kids leave the hospital if they're diagnosed on, on, on a Dexcom. And it, we had a family uh, speak at our town hall meeting uh, for our company a, a while ago. We often do that. And when they're first, they had two children with type one diabetes. And the first one, it took them seven years for the physician to recommend a CGM. And then lo and behold, their second child got diagnosed and that child went to the pharmacy and picked it up after the diagnosis. That's how much this has changed. And I think that's a continual theme here. Forget all the noise and, and all the other stuff. I, I think for Dexcom, that's the theme, that we're truly entrenched in the middle of all this rather than trying to justify our presence. Excellent. And as you're, if you're watching this and not just listening, usually this is an audio podcast, but I take notes and I look at stuff. So I promise I'm paying attention. It's a very strange feeling to go from just audio to knowing you can kind of see me as I'm scratching all my stuff here. I, I want to come back to that, leaving the hospital with a Dexcom um, in just a, a couple of minutes. But I would like to ask you about um, your partners with Insulet, with Tandem, that kind of thing. Um, the biggest question I got was how soon, right? You haven't, the G7 is not yet FDA approved and everyone wants to know how soon will it be integrated? I, actually, I have one. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were going to break the news oh, here. That I, I have one doing. right here. I can show you the box. I won't show you more than that. Uh, you know, we have to get it approved. We're working on the engineering side with both companies now. Uh, I can't speak to their timelines. I know we're devoting tremendous resources to both. And we'll get it done as quickly as we can. You know, when you get a new product approved like this, there are cycles you have to go through, not on only on the engineering side, but also on the approval side from the reimbursement contracts and everything else. So I, I'm hopeful that we can line a lot of those things up and both our partners can go very quickly. In the meantime, the best way to get ready for a G7 is to use a G6 with these systems and get used to them and, and, and you know, and get used to treating that type of treatment. And then when G7 comes, it'll just be that much better. Is G7, and I believe you've answered this before, but G7 has been submitted asking for the ICGM designation. In other words, there shouldn't be we don't, we don't, we don't ask, we only submit that way. Uh, oh. and, and so it's, it absolutely should be an, an ICGM product. There shouldn't be any doubt there. To clarify, I'm saying ask, you're saying submit potato, potato. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, okay. submitted, we submitted under those guidelines. Got it. Uh, that, whole, that question. Whole ICGM, uh, you know, one of the half hour warm up, and, and off it goes. We have talked quite a bit this year, which is great, and I appreciate that, about the features of the G7, and it was great to talk to your CTO, Jake Leach, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, are there any features, and I know things may change through the submission process, any features that you are announcing at ADA that we haven't heard yet? And again, Kevin, I don't know if you know, this, this interview will not run until Tuesday. Okay. I don't think we have any... Uh... Any G7 features we're announcing that are different. We're still somewhat limited due to the fact that that is still under review. It is a it has been launched internationally in other geographies, so we can't talk about it. But we don't want, really have any new features that we're announcing here. We spoke a lot to the features. I think the most important feature is going to be, you know, the reaction we get when people wear it. Uh, the patients we've had so far in the UK have worn this system. The reaction's overwhelming. 
Uh, and those who've worn CGM before, the reaction's even more overwhelming than those that are new to it uh, because they feel the experience is that much enhanced over what they've used before. E everything from the new receiver, which is smaller, but you know, easier to use and, and, and just a, a nice product. And, you know, much to my surprise, when we went to the phone, I thought the receiver would be dead. It isn't. Uh, there are a number of patients who don't want their phone being their medical device. And so the receiver reaction has been very good. Uh, you know, the ability, again, our continued ability, ability to pair to multiple devices, the G7 pairs to three can pair to up to three devices at the same time. When we come out, we won't have that third, but in the not too distant future, we'll have direct Apple Watch with G7. This has the Bluetooth capability of doing that. So you could theoretically be paired to your pump, your phone and directly to your Apple Watch uh, and use the G7 system and, and input directly to the G7 software, not just one. And that is some wonderful technology. I, I think people will love that as well. And to clarify, could you then, I don't know why you would want to do this, but could you pair to your Tandem X2 pump, to your to your Tandem X2 pump, to your phone, and to a receiver, three devices, as you said? Yep, you could pick the receiver versus the, the Apple Watch as your third one, yeah. Okay, because right now you're limited to two, to two devices, you one minute. You're limited to two, and G7 will, will eventually support three. Eventually, Okay. Um, you know, I have a lot of, we've, like I said, we've talked a lot this year and we've oh, yeah. talked about a lot of features and a lot of expectations. I have some little nitty gritty questions that my listeners sent. Go for it. Yeah, let's go through that. Um, one of the questions came up about um, Apple CarPlay and Android Car compatibility. Is that something that is going to be with the direct to watch? I'm not familiar with any of that. I don't really use it. That much? You know, I, I don't have a good answer to that question. I, I don't know. I, I'd have to ask somebody. Maybe I could have uh, our team follow up here if there's some news. But for now, I just I can't answer that one. I don't know. Okay. And I have another one from the Facebook group. And I want to read this because I think you'll get a kick out of, of some of it. Um, well, I'll make a kick out of all of it. We'll see. Okay. So she first says, I want to let you know that I have used Dexcom since the month the original seven came out. That was 15 years ago. We got shirts Oh I still God. have it. Wait, I have to put my glasses on for this one. The shirts say seven days without CGM makes one week. And one week is makes one, the pronoun W-E-A-K. So it makes one week. Um, I love I don't know that. If we had a marketing department yet. <laughs> but that's okay. So she gave me a photo and I'll, I'll share that. But the question was, and I thought the question was terrific. She says, this is, oh, excuse me, this is Jim. I'm so sorry, Jim, I, I changed who you are. Jim says, we all know that, de that we all know that the scanners at the airport won't hurt the Dexcom. Dexcom says they haven't tested this. Have they tested airport scanners? Most US airport scanners are the same. Why not test them? It is a pain to go through the airport. Do us a favor and make it easier. Again, I, I don't have an answer to that question. I can tell you that a scanner has never detected a sensor on me, but I have been randomly selected for the search and have somebody go up on my arm and go, what is this? And I've had to explain what it is. Yeah. But no, we haven't. I, I, if, if we're not required to test on scanners, we're probably not going to do extra testing. We know they don't hurt them. Okay. Um, and as you listen, you know, Check out the directions, listen to your Dexcom educator, your rep. Um, we have gone through many, many, many airport scanners with zero issues yeah. on Betty. Um, but that's, that's an interesting one. Um, I guess that's a good question because you can, you can test four things, but you, you're not looking we'll for connect anything. To, we can connect to three. We test, we test all sorts of things to get this product through the regulatory process. There's very rigorous testing it goes through. I made a face because what have you tested that we haven't talked about? Like what's I, something? I can't go into all those. No. <laughs> but, well, but I'll give you one example. You know, one of the features of G6 was we, we resolved with G5 and G4, we had acetaminophen that would affect the sensor's performance. And we changed the chemical composition of the membranes to whereby the interference didn't happen. So we do a tremendous amount of testing on various things they could interfere with the sensor's accuracy and performance. And one of the reasons we have the only ICGM designation for AID is because we block all those things. 
So there isn't a, a risk that if you take something, or at least not a known risk, given all the, the compounds we've tested against, that they will affect the sensor's performance. And that testing gets very involved and very detailed and, and in very big numbers. It, it was an inter interesting thing for me to learn, but it's very rigorous. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, you know, you've, you've skipped ahead because I, I have a couple other questions I'll circle back to, but a little bit of an elephant in the room um, and with testing with things that keep a product from getting AID and ICGM, well, just AID certification. Um, Abbott Libre recently, Libre 3 came through, did not get this. I don't know if they submitted for it. We're going to talk to them in the future. My understanding is that they have issues with vitamin C. There may be other issues, but let me ask you about Abbott. And really what I want to ask you about is insulate. So what I mean by that is, so Abbott is this huge worldwide player in the US Dexcom is a much bigger player with CGM. Everybody thought when we heard this rumor report a couple of weeks ago from Bloomberg, Dexcom buying insulate, this makes a lot of sense because Abbott is so big worldwide. How are you guys going to compete and continue? You knocked it down. But in the report, the quote from Dexcom says, we're not going to do any merger. The initial report was an acquisition of insulate. So let me ask you, Kevin, straight up. Acquisition is not a merger. Are plans to acquire insulate off the table as well? No, our comment, we, we stand by our comment. We're not in acquisition or merger talks with anyone uh, right now. And, and we felt the need before this show to quelch all the rumors. And so that's that's why we did that. We typically would not comment on a rumor, but given the fact that there's the show this week, we did not want our team spending all their time talking about this, nor uh, Insulet's team talking about this every day. A merger and acquisition are, are somewhat similar, uh, just different ways to do a transaction, but we're, we're happy uh, with our plans and, and where we're headed. Uh, we have taken on the challenge of scale internationally and, 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 and it, is, it is a steep hill. Uh, we, you know, we've gone from, I don't know, six, seven years ago, only $100 million in revenue internationally to almost $700 million this year. If you look at the Wall Street breakdown of our numbers, forget ours. That's a lot of growth and a lot of infrastructure to build. We've had some real breakthroughs internationally. We've got some really neat strategies uh, for example, we've taken our G6 system and we've created a new product line uh, called Dexcom One, which is a different experience. It is not an AID experience. It's not co connect to multiple things. We're not going to have share and follow on the system. It's a very simple CGM. We've priced it at a lower price point because it doesn't solve all the problems that the G series uh, problem solves. And that's enabled us to broaden the use of our product to more people who have this covered in other countries and get it reimbursed. So this dual product and this product portfolio strategy is something we're going to pursue very much over the next uh, four or five years because we think glucose measurement is valuable for everybody, but there are different use cases. And, and the best use case, particularly in some of these other markets, is where it can be reimbursed and where it can be paid for. And so we're now uh, participating in, in tenders in Europe. That's the reimbursement process with the government where we weren't, were not able to participate before because uh, we've got a lower price offering and there's still, you know, the other category of, of patients who want all the features of the G series or who need them, in fact, all the time. So we've done that in Europe. That's one of our growth strategies. Uh, some of the other things we've done internationally, this year, for example, we integrated the acquisition of our Australian distributor and CGM has now been approved with full coverage in Australia, G6 has, and that has been a wonderful uh, you know, that acquisition for us, because we, we did pay cash for that business as, as said in all of our, our disclosures, but that's gonna be wonderful for patients in Australia. And it gives us the opportunity to really tell our story as best we can. Uh, Dexcom as a company has been very thoughtful in preparing for the future. As you look at our balance sheet, for example, we have a significant amount of cash to continue to grow this business. We've invested uh, in G7 equipment, G6 equipment, and also building a, a third plant in Malaysia, over three years, we're going to probably spend over a billion dollars uh, getting ready for the future and being able to build this technology and take it all over the world in several different forms. So we're, we're very excited about our future. That's a very long answer to your question. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of a meandering I, question. So I, I think covered, it was I covered a lot of points that I think are very That's important. okay. 
You know, one of the things that Abbott also announced recently, and we've talked about this before, was that they are starting trials for glucose and ketone censoring in the same sensor. And when you and I talked about this back in January, you had said um, that that was fine. You were happy to let Abbott lead and see if there was a market for that, which I, I think was the quote. Um, is Dexcom still feeling that way? Or are you thinking of incorporating other types of sensors? You had mentioned that, you know, you're we do look at, doing no, no, we do look at other analytes yeah. and we are evaluating other analytes for a sensor system. I, and again, we'll see if it's useful. I guess my question for you, Stacey, is if you're on an AAD system and doing well, shouldn't you be able Okay, with glucose values, I this is what I want to try and figure out as we. I think it's a great question. I really do. Um, no, I don't. I, I'll tell you what. If the price went up, I would not be happy because I don't think I need to monitor my son for ketones every moment of the day. Certainly not on five minute cycles. But but, but at the end but of all, others may may disagree, right? And the process, I always encourage our engineers and our commercial team to go through. I, I, I've now boiled my management style down to one simple question: What problem are we solving? Right. And if we do an analysis on, the, on this and find it solves a significant problem, it's something we would pursue with much greater vigor and, and go faster with. Um, we, we, we do test other analytes. We've, we've worked with ketone sensors on our platform. We've looked at multi-sensor type things on our platform. We've actually even hired some others to help us with more of our advanced technology and expand that group. Some incredibly bright young minds have just joined our company to look at some of these things. So. Is it something that's going to happen tomorrow? No. And, you know, we've got our biggest launch in history with G7 coming. So we'll focus on that and do that very well. Uh, you'll hear from us in other areas, I'm sure, in the not too distant future. But for now, we're good where we are. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about um, iOS, app updates, that kind of thing. Um, I've been getting a little bit of feedback from the community, people saying, you know, I tried to update my iOS and then my Dexcom didn't work and it's not compatible. And, you know, I'm, again... I'm, I feel like it works very well for us. We're on the latest phone with the latest iOS with no issues. I have a 13 Pro and I think I'm on 15.5 as we're speaking. Are there issues with iOS updates and Dexcom? I don't, I don't believe that there are, but I, I, you know, I could check and follow up more. I do know that, look, the one thing I've learned about phones and everybody's phones and upgrades and all these things, everybody's phone is configured differently and works differently. We test with the iOS upgrades when we have access to them. Uh, and I think often we have a policy if we haven't tested and there's an upgrade, we'll say we haven't tested against this upgrade with a notice, uh, but we keep up as fast as we can. It's easier to keep up in the iOS world uh, than the Android world, just given the number of phones and the number of different versions of Android that there are. But we do our best to keep up. I think it's a cost and a, and a, and a capability that's very unnoticed by the outside world. You know, we, we didn't grow up a software company. We didn't grow up an app company. We grew up a sensor company. We, we got really good at making sensors. And so navigating the transition from medical device to consumer health and, and apps has been a transition for us and, and it's not simple, uh, but, but we get there and, and we continue to upgrade our processes when we can. We, our software team is now the biggest team in our R&D in our, in our function. Uh, and we've added a lot of wonderful people and been very flexible and thoughtful about, about doing this. Uh, so we're, we, we stay on it as best we can, Stacey. Sure. Um, gosh. I have lots more questions. Let's see what I can get through here. Um, the, the move from G5 to G6 was really interesting for, for people who would used it for a while in terms of sensor errors or sensor sensitivity, I guess I should say, right? Because with the G5, you get those question marks that kind of keep trucking the G6, very simply, layperson terminology here. The G6, you know, it was approved for dosing insulin. So if it, the transmitter and sensor had a little bit of confusion between them, the sensor would just say, the, the transmitter would basically say, hey, hey, I don't Stop. know what this is. You can't dose for it. Similar in the G7 or, or, or is it, how is that kind of stuff working in terms of sensor errors? Many of these things are driven by ICGM yeah. uh, and we have to display values that are statistically significant and appropriate for automated insulin delivery. And it also makes for a more accurate, better experience for users over time. 
the question will be, and with all new products, I, I we've tested G7 more than anything we've ever tested by a very, very long way. But the fact is, whenever you launch a new product, you learn something that you didn't know. That's why we're doing a, an extensive limited launch in the UK now. Uh, we will do an extensive limited launch in the UK in, in the US after approval uh, with with users and you know we go through a very detailed process of getting feedback and finding out what's going on there's literally a daily well there was a daily now it's more like twice a week report from our users on g7 as to what we've learned and what we've seen and what we can fix and do better so we're better at that we're better identifying and correcting those early things and and over time the g7 performance is going to be it's going to be spectacular g6 Performing right now, I mean, Stacy, right now our NPS scores are higher than they've ever been in the history of our company. What's People, an NPS score? Net Promoter Score. So on a you know on a one to ten scale, uh, would you recommend this product or would ah. you not? And and I, I mean our scores are are over seven, and the only people in in that category are companies like Costco and Apple. Our our, our customers have never been happier. Uh, you get the occasional outlier uh, who's unhappy. In most cases, they're not unhappy with the product. They'd be unhappy with the reimbursement or distribution process more than anything else. And yeah. the second one is there was a tech support card that just didn't go perfectly, but we now have really good procedures for that. I so have to I, ask you two questions from what you said when you're talking about the most extensive testing, compression low testing. I know that's tough to do in a lab setting. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have test results for that. It, you can compress any sensor if laid on at the, the proper angle. Uh, it is smaller. Our, our anticipated belief would be there would be less, but it's only anticipated at this point in time. Uh, the, w we, we have ideas for, for that uh, that involve all sorts of other science. Over the next couple of years, this might be a good podcast for us to talk about. All right. And then you said limited launch. What does that mean? When it's approved. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take a group of several hundred or a few thousand customers, go to G7 first, they'll use it. And we have a very detailed process whereby we go through and ask questions and monitor the performance of the device and how things are going, what features are good, what features are bad, what we would change in the user guide to make things more simple or, or better over time. So we, we did a limited launch with G6 before we went full on uh, into the universe. We'll do a bigger launch with G7 because it, we think it's gonna affect a lot more people. So that's a standard practice at our company uh, to yeah. do that. Just my listeners, they're gonna say, how do I get that? Can you sign uh, up? Can you? You can't sign up. Well, we, we, we have internal processes for figuring that out. Got it. You know, at the very beginning, you mentioned the family that had gone seven years before they got a Dexcom for their first child and then immediately got one for the, unfortunately, the next child that was diagnosed. I don't know if this is an okay question to ask a CEO, but we've talked for years, so I'm gonna ask it anyway. I feel like sometimes you give people the Dexcom, not you personally, but sometimes people get diabetes technology and they don't always get the education that needs to come with it. I run a very large group for Charlotte area parents of type ones. They come home from the hospital, they don't yet understand diabetes. They're in my group saying, what does this arrow mean? What do that I kind do? of thing. Wait, wait, wait. And then they're really terrified to go a moment without it. Are you guys almost a victim of your own success in terms of the marketing of this and in terms of getting it out there so quickly? Because if anything goes wrong, there's a lot of panic. You know, I don't know that we're a victim. I think I, 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 I couldn't imagine encountering what you have encountered in your life without a CGM. I just couldn't. And, and so I think what we have is a situation where we're learning to treat this condition better. And we're learning to treat it with more information from the very beginning. And, and, and what has been created, and I will agree with you on this, then if you go without it, if you've never had anything else, there is panic that sits in because you were never trained to do anything else other than that. I, I think I don't, I, I think it speaks very favorably of, of Dexcom's mission and, and how much we've accomplished over the years. I, I, I view it as a huge win. Well, I know we're out of time, but I really appreciate it. You know, we're big fans and Benny's had a Dexcom. It's funny that you said that he didn't have it for seven years from ages two to ages nine. And we don't want to give it back. Okay. We're much better off without it. 
I'm just a big proponent of education and I know you are too, but I really appreciate you joining me. Have a great time in New Orleans and I can I give you some restaurant recommendations off the air. Okay. Take care, Stacey. Thanks. And th <laughs> goodbye, everybody. All right. Have a good one. See ya.